grace is this concept where like you understand that like perfection is not realistic. And so in order to make up for like the lack of ability to reach the state of perfection, grace comes in and with grace essentially is like, if you do your best every single day, I can forgive the rest, right? Because you're going to make a mistake, right? But what grace also is, is because I know that you're trying to do your best and I'm gonna already forgive the rest, then I will also give you things without you having to earn it. And the way that my auntie really kind of explained it to me, she was like, don't you give your child gifts without her having to earn it? And I was like, like, absolutely, right? Like, there are some things that like, I'm like, you have to earn this, but at the end of the day, like, she gets <laughs> basically what she wants, whether she's earned it or not, because as a parent, it feels really good to give to your child, right? Like, is this, is, as a as a boyfriend it feels really good to give to your partner right like when you love someone it just feels really good to give and i started thinking like oh wow like what if we brought that concept in the schools that you love your students so much that you are just constantly giving and giving and giving and giving to them and not putting them in a position to have to earn any and everything that they get from our institutions right Essentially, that's what equity is. Equity is the state of being in which you try to fill in the gaps for the people that you are working with and working for every single day, regardless of whether there's a policy in place, regardless of if they are the best and most deserving or what we might consider the worst and least deserving, right? Like who determines these criteria that equals deserving or non-deserving? Who determines what is good and what is bad, right? These are all socially constructed things and therefore we can decide as people who love that, yo, I can give to you without you having to be in a position to earn it through merit. The question becomes though, one, how do you do that? How do you live in that way? But even if you can figure out how to live in that way as an individual, how do you then begin to work in that way and get your particular organization, business, et cetera, to think and behave in that way, right? Some organizations are governed by like capitalist values, which there's nothing wrong with capitalist values. It's just that when you understand that, then you understand that we uh, value profit over anything else, right? Some organizations aren't based off of capitalist values, but they're based off of a meritocracy. So your promotion is only based on what you've done to earn it. Your ability to have certain freedoms and flexibilities at work is only based on what you've done to earn it, right? And what equity says is like, let's stop always putting people in positions to earn and start finding ways to, to utilize love in an in a, in a operational way so that within my business, within my department, within my organization, people have opportunities that they might not have had otherwise if it wasn't for this equity mindset. What happens with that is now all of a sudden your organization becomes more diverse and more inclusive. Why? Because some people aren't starting at the same starting line because of life, right? So yes, in the womb, we all are equal, right? In, in your mind, like, in the womb, when all the conditions, but then you realize, no, 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 no. The most equal we are, are at the moment of inception. Because everything after that moment is inequitable. Why? Because maybe the womb that you were born in had better access to healthcare than the womb that I was born in. Maybe the womb that you were born in had better access to a loving environment than the womb that I was born. So 
The moment that conception happens, and equity immediately begins to invade your life, right? Because all wombs aren't created equally, right? Even if the, the, the fetus in the body is. So when you think about that, you're like, oh, so we recognize that folks are born into inequity. Then we also recognize that with that, some folks are born way further back of the starting line than others. Equity allows me to say for that person that started behind the starting line, hey, I'm going to artificially bump you up. I'm going to artificially level the playing field. I'm going to artificially give you opportunities that maybe because of circumstances beyond your control, those opportunities haven't came for you. And now, when I do that, all of a sudden my workplace becomes more diverse because those who are typically born in inequity tend to look the same, right? It's just the fact of life. Too often we think of racism in individual terms. We think of it as a person to person action, but it's not that. It never was that. It's systemic. It means that the system responds to you and your ethnicity and your race and the color of your skin in certain ways that it doesn't respond to other folks. So what do I mean by that? If I encounter a police officer, do I believe that this police officer is racist? No matter what their ethnicity is, do I believe that they're racist? No. But could I say the system is racist? Yeah, why? Because the system disproportionately incarcerate people that look like me. So as a police officer, part of your job, part of just staying safe is to understand tendencies of what certain criminals that you've been taught look and sound like. So if the, if the majority of folks that are being incarcerated look like me, then when you pull me over, you're already pre-primed pre to think that I've done something wrong, not because you're racist, but because the system says, this is what a criminal looks like. And I know that because when I walk into the jails, this is what I see, right? So the system in and of itself is racist, which means that it impacts my ability to do certain things in life. Equity comes in and, and gives us an opportunity in a, in a I don't wanna say fair way, because here's the deal. Fair is unjust. Well, what is fair? Fair is we're gonna give everybody, if I'm gonna give this person who started behind the starting line, if I'm gonna give them a head start, then I, what's fair is I gotta give the person who starts at the, the gap still remains. Equity by design eliminates the gap. So it can't be fair. If I say to you right now, how do you pump gas with equity? As an individual, you might just have an equitable mindset. So you understand how to pump gas with equity, even if you can't articulate it, right? But it's the articulation that matters when you're working in organized environments. Because what I understand to be equity might be a little bit different from what you understand to be equity. And both of us together may not be able to articulate it to somebody who does not have an equitable mindset. So our program really teaches you how, how you articulate it in such a way that will allow folks who don't have an equitable mindset to now begin to jump on board and adopt that mindset and then create policy practices and norms that now govern whatever space that you work in so that that space now all of a sudden becomes welcoming to folks that it never had been welcoming to before, right? If you are an executive for Home Depot and you're trying to understand like within my role, how can I be an equity leader? How can I um, influence equity within my, this program is for you, right? So it is designed to get our students to really expand across all sectors and not just education because equity is needed in all sectors, right? And so, uh, and, we, and we have to be smart about this because 
three years ago when George Floyd died, everybody was looking to, we got, we need an equity director. Now that we're getting further and further away from that, folks are looking and saying, do we really need an equity director? Do we really need a director of diversity, right? And so our students are gonna to have to understand that this program, there may not be opportunities in terms of directors and managers and leaders of equity and diversity. And so that equity work is gonna to have to be embedded into those other traditional jobs that aren't going away. So you're gonna to have to learn how to be a director of equity from the position of principal. You're gonna to have to learn how to be director of equity from the position of HR manager, right? You're gonna to have to learn how to embody EDI, equity, diversity, and inclusion within the role of whatever you already have because those other direct positions are kind of being eliminated. And what we don't want is when the positions go away for the work to go away with it. If we can better understand each other, understand each other's cultural differences from a position of, let me not say love, from a position of acceptance, which means that if you eat food that are different from the foods that I eat, instead of me yucking your yum, I learn how to yum your yum, right? When we're able to do that better, start yumming the yums of other people who are different from us, as opposed to yucking it, it, it puts us in a position where not only are we better able to understand other people, but we, we're able to open up dialogue. One of the things that shuts down dialogue with people is when you don't feel accepted. When you feel like you've been silenced because whatever it is you have to say or have to contribute is not going to be valued or appreciated, right?